Hi, thanks for joining us. Today I am talking to Paul Clitheroe, who is the chair of InvestSmart, one of our fabulous content providers and chair of pretty much everything else I can think of in the financial services <laughs> industry. So one of the founders of IPAC mm. Securities, the chair of the Financial Literacy Foundation, so many very, very important services that are provided to help Australians build their wealth create their wealth, grow their wealth, build their wealth. All of the above. All of the above. And he's here today to help us talk about the very basic steps you can take to build your own financial plan. So rather than being in a scenario where you are going to find advice from somewhere mm. else or feeling a little bit lost, the really structured, straightforward things you can do to get it right. Yeah, look, I, and here we think we can cover everyone because mm. whether you're seeking advice and you think you need advice uh, or you're one of the many people who are now going to more go your own pathway, mm. it applies to anyone because if you are seeing an advisor, being organised just makes a heap of sense. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so talk us through the very first step that you would suggest everyone start with. Well, I said this is, I really, I really love this stuff because, mm. look, let's be quite frank here, I've been in this industry for... 40 odd years and I've made mm. a good living out of complexity, okay? <laughs> and, yeah. and, and thanks to various treasurers for making superannuation increasingly mm. difficult. Yeah. Uh, it, it does, it, look, but the, the truth is our industry makes it overly complicated. Mm. And we use lots of wonderful words, you know, pre, mm. post, undeducted, concessionals and alpha returns on your portfolio. Mm. And, yeah, all, all, mm. all sorts of really indexed versus <laughs> active. You know, we've got all this stuff going on, mm. but we get so, I think, entranced with our own cleverness mm. um, that, that really every Australian, every citizen of the planet can mm. do most of this work themselves. So. Uh, let's just come down to what is actually really, really important. Mm. Uh, I know people want a hot tip to get rich overnight mm. and blah, blah, blah. But it's not going to mm. happen. Yeah. I don't know either. Mm. So basically, let, let's just do the really important stuff. And, mm. and when people are asking for a hot tip, I like to ask them a few questions, such mm -hmm. as how much do you earn? And they go, how much do I earn? And they go, well, I think I get about $70,000. Mm -hmm. I'm like, good. How much do you clear? And they go, oh, yeah, what do I get in my pay packet? And so we, we have a bit of a starting problem in rule number one, mm. is what's, what's coming in. Mm -hmm. Let's get that sorted. Yep. Uh, now, now that'll take five minutes. Yeah. Then they go, oh, I know what you're going to say now, Paul. Mm. You're going to say, do a budget. We did, disaster. Yeah. <laughs> or just depressing, well, just depressing. Usually a disaster. Right, okay. Because mm. typically the budget, you know, what we do is we're humans. Mm. So we, we write down a budget deciding that we're going to now live like a Buddhist monk. Mm. So we're going to live in a cave and we're going to grow our own vegetables and <laughs> we're going to save, you know, 80% of our salary. Well, no, mm -hmm. we're not. Yeah. So basically we're not going to do a budget. Mm -hmm. Forget it. Not doing it. No budget. <laughs> no budget to start with. Mm. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to only do a budget when we understand the truth. And the truth is what he's spending. Yeah. And you'll very quickly get the, the nub of the truth, which is your rent, your mortgage repayment, your car mm. repayment. Uh, you'll probably get right. Uh, mm -hmm. You'll probably put down car running costs, oh, 20 bucks a week for fuel. Mm. Well, no, wrong, mm. Bzzz, wrong yeah. answer. Yeah, yeah. You know, we go to the RACV or NRMA, or mm. whoever you like, and we, we find the cost of running your typical mid-sized, relatively inexpensive car, mm. you know, and we go to find out it, it's probably close to $300 a week. Wow. And we, wow. Yeah, and we, we, mm. but how's that? Yeah, Well, what are you doing with it? Tires, rego, mm. insurance, mm. It, the petrol's irrelevant. I mean, it's just, yeah. a, you know, depreciation. You um, feel it because you see it every day. Yeah, so, so, so I get budgets all mm. the time where the cost of running the car is 20 bucks a week on petrol. Mm. And we've just probably, we look, certainly, we're, we're probably at least a couple hundred dollars a week short. Mm. And so it's, look, I know we don't want to be honest, but mm. it's why budgets don't work. Mm -hmm. So we go to our car, we go to one of the motoring organisations in your state, mm. and we find out what the cost of running your car is. Mm -hmm. And of course, that will include replacing it. Yes. And you'll go, but that's not a problem today. But it's, it's going to yeah, be yeah. a problem, okay? Yeah, your car is not going to last So forever. you paid 30 grand for that car? Mm. We all know it's not going to sell for $30,000 mm. any time ever. Mm. So let, let's be honest here. So we get the car in there. The the other big one we tend to fail dismally is mm. it's, it's it's either the ATM or the swipe card. Mm. Um, now I know you were telling me earlier on your, your two year old's mm. already got the hang of swipe cards. So she knows how to tap. She'll pick up the card and she'll tap it for me and then put it back in the purse. She loves that experience. I'll mm. bet she does. Mm. Talk about our children learning nothing. Mm. Isn't that terrifying for you parents? So yeah. At, at least with my kids, we, we had, they saw cash going over mm. the counter. It's, it, that's another subject matter completely. Yeah. But anyway, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to go through this really obnoxiously painful month. Mm. Because what we're going to do is that every time we tap for a month, mm. every time we take $100 out of an ATM and it just disappears, yeah. 
we are going, if we're not going to do this, mm -hmm. we are not making any progress. We are going nowhere. Don't right. bother doing a budget. Basically, look, you're going to fail. Yeah. Okay. It's an imaginary so, so exercise. It's really mm -hmm. awful. It mm -hmm. is imaginary. Mm -hmm. So we, we work out where the money's going. And mm -hmm. uh, your budget might say have two beers, two, two beers with friends on Friday night. Mm -hmm. Look, in actual fact, it might be six beers, a hamburger and a half bottle of red. <laughs> uh, that, that, and a taxi home. And a, <laughs> that's yeah. right. Because mm -hmm. we were going to walk, but after yeah. a couple of beers, we couldn't be bothered. Okay. Like all right. yeah. So we're going to write it all down. Mm -hmm. And then we're, going to, then we're going to get to this horrible truth. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be... Hopefully, with this horrible truth, we'll still see we're spending less than we're earning. Mm -hmm. But at least it explains why we're not saving towards the house as fast yeah. as we wanted. We're not building our share portfolio. We're not able to mm. pay our home loan off. We're not able to buy an investment property. Mm. We, you know, we, we're not able to take that holiday without using a credit card. Yeah. So for the first time, the horrible truth gets revealed, and it, it's yeah. really depressing. Mm. I still do it each year with my wife, and it, it's it's still mm. oh, did we really spend that much? You know, it's really it's not it's it's not ideal. So we I think do. Think it's very powerful for people to hear that you still do that, though. Well, it's very powerful to yeah, hear. Yeah, look, we've, we're going to come to my, my point three quickly, and I'll, then I'll come back and answer your question. But the so point one is we know we now know what's coming in. Point two, we know our fixed costs going out, but we now spend a month writing everything down, and for mm. the first time, we truly understand variable costs. Yeah. We understand the muffin, the coffee. You understand what your two-year-olds do. <laughs> <laughs> tap, 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 tap. Um, the most, but at least that's on a statement. The most dangerous mm. of all is a hundred bucks from the ATM. Yeah. You, yeah any no any money in your pocket will be spent. Yeah. Now that's cool. That's mm. cool. But but we need to know for a month where it's mm. going. So then we've got this situation where if you're going, why is my why does my budget say I'm saving money, and my credit card's getting greater each mm. month? Yeah. You know, why why is this happening to me? Mm. So we're taking control. Yeah. This, the, you you are putting yourself in control. Mm. The the pain you are going to go through to get this right is you will end up being proud of yourself once mm. you get over the depression. <laughs> um, yes. Okay. That's so, good but to you know. know. You will be that's proud important. of yourself. It, it, it's a one step mm. thing. What's coming in? What's going out? We're now under control. We've hopefully got surplus income, mm -hmm. and now for the first time in our lives, we can start to have a genuine conversation with ourselves. We're saying. Gee, you know, um, retirement's too far away for most people. Mm. So what we're going to do, the word, and, and actually at my age, retirement's wrong as well. Mm. Most of us are working part-time these days. Mm. Probably your parents are similar age. Mm -hmm. The world's changed, okay? I think yeah. the idea, oh, I'm 65, I get a gold medal and I, re look, forget mm. it. Yeah. So let's dump the word retirement. Please, mm -hmm. please, please don't use the word retirement ever again, okay? Just don't <laughs> use it. Mm. So we're going to use financial independence as my third rule. I love that. A financial mm. independence is I don't care if you're two is a bit young, but your daughter. <laughs> but mm. whether you're 18, 25, 35, 55, or you're mm. 62, don't care. Yeah. Because I know many people my age who think they're financially independent but haven't really quite worked it out. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's just do it, okay? Mm -hmm. And financial independence is this third factor because then you've got to talk about it's easy easy to talk about what we're spending today because we now know because mm. of step two, we mm -hmm. know what we're spending today. But for people in my age group, um, it's easy for me to say, gee, what does financial independence look like? Because at 62, 63 years old, I'm kind of there. Mm -hmm. So I'm actually, I don't need to pretend what I'll be spending at 62. Mm. I'm spending at 62. You're very so clear on what that is. Yeah. Whereas, you know, I go back to my and Vicky early planning in our late 20s, which I, I, I still kept these scraps of paper in, in, in a file. Mm. And, and it's really fun seeing what we thought we'd be spending at 62. Yeah. We, we got our broad lifestyle right. Yeah. Um, in terms of we'd like to be traveling, mm -hmm. uh, we'd like to do some sailing. So we, we funnily enough, we got that fairly right, actually. Wow. It's but, the power but, of writing things but, down, But right? thank God we updated it every couple of years mm. because goals change as you go through life. You know, we were talking about having kids. We, you know, but we have three healthy mm. adult children today. Mm. Was that always a given? Of course it wasn't. Mm. I mean, things happen, okay, mm. you know, that, that's life. You, mm. you, you need a plan you go back to looking at. But we still, regardless of your age, we have this thing called financial independence and your financial independence is different to mine. Mm. You and your husband will sit down and you'll have this talk about, gee, and with a two, with, I guess you've got two young children. Mm, four and a half and two. Who aren't sleeping very well. No, terrible. Probably, <laughs> financial, probably financial independence isn't that big in you. But, but when, when you get through the sleeping stage, mm. I love you and your husband to get a bottle of red and say, what does it, what does it look like? Mm. What does it look like when we're your parents' age? What does yeah. it look like when we're 60? We, we do actually oh, you do talk that? about it. We have a self-managed super fund. Yeah. And I really believe in putting a label on things. So our, our self-managed super fund is called the Global Lux Lifestyle Fund. I wanted to call it the Global Lux Travel Fund, but my husband thought that was too specific. The Global Lux? Yeah, yeah. The ATO is going to come calling for me. But that is, 
That's good. I know what it's for, right? Good. It's for retirement. I'm not planning to actually... Financial independence. That's my financial independence. Okay, good. Mm. Right. And I put a name on it. Okay, well, mm. what you've done for me here is, is, is in this, the, the, the three pot... Th we've come to pot three. Pot mm. one is what's coming in. Pot two is what's going out. Mm. Before we do a budget, we also go to, to, to pot three, which is what does financial independence look mm. like? And I know it's going to change for you and your husband. You know, I'm hoping it has some lux travel in it. Oh, it, it will have some lux travel, but mm. but but over over te decades and time, mm. when, you know, I'll, I'll look, I'll probably be dead and buried. But you know, when you and your husband are actually my age and doing this stuff, mm. it, it won't be. It will be lux travel, but it'll be probably Things something. So you got you got to keep adapting. But the fact mm. you the fact you got a plan actually gives you a high chance of success mm. because that really is this third point about having this goal for financial independence. It, it, I, what financial planners talk, they tend to lecture clients, mm. you must do goal setting. Mm. And, and, I, and I go, don't talk to me like that. Mm. But when someone says, how would you like to be financially independent? Mm. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Yeah. We're actually talking about goal setting, okay? Yeah, yeah. But it's a much, it's a much, it's a more a me word. Yeah, yeah. Goal setting sounds like something you want me to do. Goal or, setting sounds quite hard work as well. Well, yeah, and it sounds a bit sort of like a dictator. Mm. So I like the idea of, You've, ta you've now taken control of your money in steps one and two, pots one and two. Pot three is let's have a plan for financial independence. Mm. And you might want a, a, a 10 foot tin fishing boat, or you may hate fishing, you want to play golf, you may hate mm. golf, you may want Lux travel. <laughs> I, I, you may want to be a grey nomad. I don't, mm. I don't care what you want. It's a mm. democracy. This is wonderful. Yeah, you, yeah. you do your thing. Mm. You do your thing. And, but let's, let's try and put a bit of a cost around it. And you've mm. probably got a bit of a view in today's dollars that if you wanted to be doing lux travel, you, you probably got a bit of an idea uh, of what that's going to cost you. Mm. And, and that gives you a target inside your super fund. Mm. Yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I'm happy mm. with that. Mm. Really happy. So point three, we've got this thing called financial independence and you've put a price on it around mm -hmm. your lux travel and running your house and mm. blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. um, and then basically this, this financial independence, I don't want people to have a lump sum. I want them to say, um, for my lifestyle dreams, I need... Fifty thousand a year, or mm -hmm. sixty thousand a year, or let's be you know lux travel a hundred thousand a year. <laughs> yes. And I, I, in a sense, certainly, and this really works particularly well. The number Vicky and myself always use throughout our time together has been: think about the number we want to multiply it by seventeen. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and it's it's about look, it's been about right for decades and decades. Yeah. So if you want about that hundred thousand a year, which is which is lux travel, mm -hmm. that, that'll get you there. That's it pretty luxy, luxe. pretty luxy, pretty luxy. Mm -hmm. Multiply it by 17, um, and I'm not going to try and tell you what your lifestyle target is. That's your private business. Mm. But if it was $100,000, and, and you know that number, I'm sure, mm. you've probably multiplied it by that 17. Mm. 17 times 100,000 is 1.7 million. Mm -hmm. And your, whatever your number is, you're probably saying, if my, if, with your husband, if the two of us do this over the next 30 odd years, mm. that will get us to this target. We will be financially independent. Mm. And our financial independence means lux travel. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, yours might be more than mine, it might be less than mine. Uh, another I person. I don't need a boat. Uh, you don't I'm happy to ride on other people's boats. I don't know my own. That's actually a really smart financial <laughs> strategy. We're not, we're, not, we're, not go, we're not going. Yeah, yeah, don't my, get a boat. My, yeah. my, my wife, or a horse. My, my wife don't is. Don't get a horse. Don't get a horse. Yeah. My wife's strongly in favour of the boat thing. We won't talk about that. <laughs> so, um, that's my thing. But um, so basically, we've now got our three pots. Now, when we've got this together, now's a really good time to do a budget mm. because we actually, now we can put in what money we're bringing home, which mm. is pretty easy. But for the first time in our lives, in our budget, we actually write down what we're really spending. Mm. Uh, and, and the other thing is, is, there's no point saying to yourself, gee, you know, oh, I'm, I'm spending, uh, you know, I'm spending a thousand a week, I'm going to cut that to $500. Mm. Uh, because if $500 of that is your mortgage and $200 mm. is your car, mm. well, you know, maybe you're going to change to a push bike. Yeah. We, we, and people or live are, on the street. Oh, people, maybe not. If people knew how much cars really cost them, yeah. Honestly, you know, it, it really it, it's a really interesting conversation about. Uh, you know, I've always had this saying about you know drive the cheapest car your ego can live with. So we have one ten-year-old car. Well done for a family of four. Well done. And we drive it about once a week. Yeah, yeah, but uh, mm. but that depending on where you live, and for some, some depends of, on your circumstances. Yeah, some of We're them, some of our, some of our that. viewers today, uh, mm. you know, will say, well, that's all very good and well, and uh, mm. I'm not going to ask you. It's not fair. Mm. But you're probably living somewhere fairly close in the biggish city, and I, mm. and that's your private business. I don't want to know. Mm. Because the second you you know you, you're not using a car often, people mm. are going to go, oh, hang on, she's got public transport around her somewhere. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and many Australians are fortunate to do that. Yeah. But also, I'm very respectful. I grew up in the in Griffith, out in the country, yeah. and you know, kind of, you know, certainly for my mum and dad, the one, one car thing was you yeah, know, just, bit, just, just a bit of a struggle. Yeah. And so, so there, are, you know, that that's people's personal positions that mm. they take into account. So that, that's all cool. 
So we've now got this situation where really we've now got really a terrific plan. Mm. Um, it doesn't sound like we've done much. Mm. How, much am I, how much am I earning? How much am I spending? Really? Mm. My goal is this, and now hopefully because we've got our money under control, we're now saying we're saving 100 bucks a week or 500 bucks a week. Mm. I don't know what people are saving, it's mm. up to you. But then we're saying, and this is where my industry, your industry, my mm. industry, our industry gets mm. really complicated. We now get into these very detailed conversations about, oh, you should buy property or you should mm. buy shares, depending upon usually the advisor's bias, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that's normal. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, if you're buying shares, it's very important you buy index, not active. Mm. Other people say, oh, no, 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 you've got to buy active, buy not active, index. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's mm. sake, I don't I care. I market unlisted. Oh, I don't mm. care. Mm. Uh, basically, oh, the property bubble in Australia, you know, property prices are going to collapse. Well, if you think that, don't buy property. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Or mm. um, well, share prices are going to collapse as well. Well, you better not buy them either. <laughs> um, like, Try and find something else. You put it mm. under your bed. Mm. But look, the issue for me though is that if we go back over thousands of years of history, supply and demand is surprisingly accurate. Mm. Uh, Australia's population, it will be, um, you know, we will be around this 35, 37 million people mm. in, in about 27 years' time. Mm -hmm. Melbourne will be a bit over 8 million people. Sydney will mm. be a bit over 8 million people. Mm. Adelaide, Perth, all growing. Mm. Brisbane, southeast mm. corner of Queensland. Yeah. Uh, Broome, uh, Wagga Wagga, mm. uh, Young, uh, you know, mm. Orange, Albury, Bendigo. Mm. Look, look, when you get this bigger population growth, and, and by the way, yes, we have some fairly uh, large immigration numbers at the moment, but look, you know, that basically, as you, know, as, as, you, as you are with two young children, most of our growth is actually people doing mm. what people do, mm. having kids. Yeah. You know, our birth, rate, our birth rate is quite strong in mm. this country. So we have population growth regardless. Mm -hmm. So the population is going to be a lot bigger, putting politics aside. Mm. And it just seems to me that if, if, if property prices, if people tell me, oh, you know, property prices are going to fall 20 or 30%, which one day they will. Mm -hmm. My house in 1990. My mm. house in a big city fell in value by about 30% when interest rates hit 18.75%. Mm. Mm -hmm. Now, three years later, it, it, it had recovered that amount. Yeah. Did it really matter? It only mattered if I got forced out of the market mm. and I was forced to sell into a downturn. Yeah. So the issue for me is, is that I struggle to believe that with a rapidly growing population, that whether a well-located property falls in value or not, which it will do at some point in time, mm. if I'm holding that, I'm not a punter and I'm an investor. Yeah. If I'm holding that well-located property in a population growth area for the next couple of decades, mm. does it, look, someone trying to convince me it's going to be worth less mm. with more people, it's a bit of a struggle for Seems me. Unlikely. It's a bit of a struggle, yeah. it really is. And for someone to tell me that with growing populations around the world, growing economic growth around the world, People are actually richer than ever, living longer than ever. Mm. We've actually, go back to the World you know, the World Bank report last year showing we've halved global world poverty in the last decade. Mm. This, despite all the negative media, there's mm. some really good stuff going on out there. And so, like, what's a share? It's part of a company. Mm. What's a company doing? It's producing goods and services for mm. people. Mm. And there's more people living longer with more money. Yeah. So in good health, in many cases. Yes. Mm. So you know, do I think I know? You know, I mean, a couple of years ago, you know, Coles was flavour of the month, and Woolies was going badly, mm. and now Woolies is going really well, <laughs> and maybe Coles is mm. not going. So, uh, you know, which, which of the bank shares do I buy? Well, mm. NAB, you know, obviously your parents mm. doing this, or mm. Commonwealth Bank is doing that, whatever it may be. And and I kind of look at all that, and I go, you know, with more people. Um, Technology is improving the ability of all of these businesses, be they banks mm. or retailers or Woolies. It's making them more efficient. I think they'll do okay. Mm. I think BHP and Rio Tinto, with a growing world population, I think will need energy. Mm. Look, I think it's going to be okay. Mm. So basically, I tend to go out, and, I, and I've done this for, 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 for my 40 odd years of investing. Mm. I just buy property that is well located, and mm. I buy shares doing sensible things. And in particular, I recognise the Australian share market as about 2% of the world. Mm. And so I've, for, for decades now, I've held probably more than most people do in international shares. Yeah. Not because I'm smart, not because it's tricky. It just makes sense to me to participate in global growth. Mm -hmm. And as you know better than I do, probably, mm. Australia is such a resources banking market. Mm -hmm. And I want biotech and, you know, and, yeah, I, and yeah. I, I want all pharmaceuticals and mm. I, want, I want the future. Mm. And so basically I own some global stuff. Mm. And it, for me, it's that simple. So for decades, I've been taking, Vicky and myself have taken surplus income 
had a plan to use our surplus to save money to buy a house. Mm -hmm. We sacrificed lifestyle, mm -hmm. so we didn't travel. We ha we did have the one car, by the way. We had mm -hmm. a second-hand Ford Falcon. No, oh, there you go. So, so we we, mm. we, sa we sacrificed to buy the house. We mm. bought the house. We paid the house off because we decided that we'd like to be financially independent in our mid fifties rather mm -hmm. than our mid sixties, mm -hmm. and it is a simple trade-off. Yeah. What do we not do today yeah. to give us that goal? Yeah. Or do we do more travel today? and we're not independent till our later 60s. Yeah. It's a very so we decided to sacrifice early yeah. and it seemed to us at the time with three young kids travel wasn't that much yeah, fun. Yeah, you're not missing much. <laughs> it's, it's just your kids not sleeping in a different room. Correct. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, so so we didn't miss. So we so mm. we, we we and so now we went for the older second-hand car and I and because I was working in in a, in a big city I could get the train to work and mm. the sort of stuff you're talking about. Yeah. So they were our choices. So we said no 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 no. We think we're better off being great savers earlier, and we mm. also understand compound interest, mm. which is the only truth in money, really. Powerful. Shares, property, look, you don't like shares, don't buy them. Mm -hmm. You don't like property, don't buy it. Yeah. Obviously, I'd rather people have a bit of property and a bit of an investment property and mm. a, some global shares and some Aussie shares. Obviously, mm. I'd rather you spread your risk. Yeah. But at the end of the day, just do something. Yeah. I've got some people who listen to these rules, and then they spend 10 years deciding whether to buy property or shares. Mm. Just do something yeah. because inflation, population growth, economic growth, mm. and for heaven's sake, the overall rule, of course, is that when the stuff you buy goes down in value dramatically, which it will, mm. go back to your long term plan. Mm. Because if, as we saw only 10 years ago, um, we won't pick on NAB, we pick on Commonwealth Bank. <laughs> uh, I like Commonwealth Bank as well. Mm. Uh, Commonwealth Bank shares went from about $65 pre the GFC 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I think their, their low point was about $23.40. Mm. Australians sold more Commonwealth Bank shares the week of that low than in any week in the history of Commonwealth Bank share trading. Mm. And a lot of those people selling them were retirees. Yeah. It's just heartbreaking in well, retrospect, it is. isn't it? Yeah. It's a permanent capital loss. Mm. I am now 62 turning 63. Mm. I cannot afford not to invest in property and shares because I put mm. it on a term deposit. Mm. I can't be financially independent. Yeah. Haven't got enough money. Yeah. So I've got to go for higher higher return, higher risk asset classes mm. like property and shares around the planet. But what Vicky and myself have got to say to ourselves is that not 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 if, mm. as it happened only 10 years ago, mm. but the next time the market falls 50%, we mm. have got to say we are already expecting this. Yeah. This we don't part know, of our plan. We don't know why it'll happen, mm. but at some stage if we live for another 20 or 30 years, which we certainly hope to, at some point in that cycle, again, share prices will fall mm -hmm. 50, 60, 70 percent, mm -hmm. and property prices are certain to get a kick in the teeth at some point mm. in time. But with growing population, growing economic growth, we, we've got to reassure ourselves with a couple of thousand years of human history mm. that basically stuff recovers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that, that's the only catch I have to, in a sense, what I, I, what, what I fret about, because today many people watching this, like, in their, like myself in their 60s, will be financially independent, mm. um, but they, they fret about losing money. Mm. What they, when they, when people say losing money, they talk about markets going down. Markets will always go down. Mm. That is not losing money. Yeah. Losing money is we succumb to fear and mm. we sell into the downturn. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hang around, as we saw with the GFC, it's surprising. In fact, I think most Australians have forgotten the GFC. We work with people who didn't experience it at all and only learned about it at school. That's quite an interesting <laughs> experience. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. Just, just to wrap up really quickly. So really, mm. so really, they, they are, they are. Whether you're going to go and see an advisor, because mm. if you do my, my four plan thing, mm. it's so simple, isn't it? How much is coming in? How much is going out? Mm. When you've really worked how much is going out, do a budget, then you know your surplus. Then you've got, a, then you've got your own plan for your own financial independence, which means you put a price on it mm. 50, in today's money. You know 50 grand want. a year, 30 grand a year, 100, I don't care. Mm. Multiply that, multiply what you need per year in the future mm. by 17. Mm -hmm. That gives you a capital target. Mm -hmm. Then you can go onto some of the online websites like Money Smart, and mm -hmm. if you want to, you can start working up your own strategy to get mm. there. My nine and a half percent super plus my mortgage repayments mm. plus my savings. Yeah. Does it get me there or not? You can be your own financial advisor. Yeah. Or of course, it's a bit more complicated. Do go and seek professional advice. Mm. But if you seek professional advice and you've done this work, you are going to save yourself a fortune in professional advice and the professional advisor is going to breathe a sigh of relief. Mm. Because most people who come to professional advisors and you've played this role and so mm. have I, the simple truth is you spend about the first eight hours of your professional time mm. trying to encourage them to actually work out what they want. Yeah. 
and sorting through the paperwork to oh, understand the what shoe they box. have. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the shoebox. Yeah, I do love the, I do love the shoebox. Um, mm. So, so by going in organised, you're actually going to get the best use and the best value out of professional time anyway. And I can tell you right now, with stuff like my um, uh, Vicky and myself, when we turned 60 a couple of years back, the rules around super were changing so quickly. And a few of my friends were quite shocked when I said, "Oh, I'm off to see a, a super super specialist." Mm. And they said, well, but aren't you? I said, I'm a GP. Mm. Look, this is so complicated. I'm mm. a GP. I now need a cardiologist. Yeah. Um, and I think any smart GP goes to see a specialist as required. Yeah. And I know my place in life. I'm a general practitioner. Mm. And so I engage specialists in money regularly, mm. estate planning, superannuation. But the big, big advantage for me is it doesn't cost me a fortune because I go in and I'm able to define my problem, mm. ask my question, hand over the information, and I can get an answer without spending a fortune. So look, this being organised and being in control is just a, it, look, it's a no-brainer. Mm. And my, my great passion, and I'll finish on this, is that, you know, we, one of the reasons people say, well, why do you donate so much money to the government sharing the financial literacy stuff for the federal mm. governments? I'm on my, this is my sixth prime minister at the moment. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 Kelly <laughs> O'Dwyer is currently, um, uh, currently my, uh, my minister in this area, and she's mm. terrific. Mm. She's really passionate about mm. women, yes. women and money, aged, financial abuse of the elderly. Mm. Uh, she's no, really Kelly, big important issue. Kelly O'Dwyer's yeah. got some really, no, I'm, I'm impressed with her. She's got some, some really, really good stuff going on that we're, we're trying to uh, try to achieve. But, but, the, but the, you know, the, 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 the big issue for me is this stuff is just not as hard as people feel. Mm. You know, a lot of it is just, you know, it really is just, it's such common sense stuff. Mm. Um, but putting people in control, putting yourself in control, we, we know what happens when people are better in control of their money. When you're better in control of the money and you're on your way to financial independence, your stress levels reduce. Mm. You don't get the phone call saying you're late with this payment. You don't, oh my heavens, the, the car's broken down, what mm. do I do? Um, you don't go away and find all of a sudden you've got a, seven, a holiday that which you really enjoyed and then you've forgotten about and you've got 10 grand on your credit card. Mm. You don't do that stuff. We know in all of the work done around the very high divorce rate in this country that money arguments are a big part of relationships. Mm. And having a joint goal, which you and your husband have got around mm. Lux Travel, <laughs> is that mm. I don't really, I, it's a bit, look, look, I'm not trying to be glib here. I really don't care what your goal as a mm. couple is, but I'm really thrilled you've got a goal yeah. because it actually gives your relationship a better chance as well. Yeah. Having you, something you, to look forward you're, you're, to is you're, fantastic. Well, you're, but, yeah, but you're stepping down the same path. Mm. You know, he's not saving for a sailing boat, mm. and, you know, and, you're, and mm. you don't quite know. Yeah. You, you know, you, this, this is the thing, you know, you, you can't, you can, as a couple, you can have different goals in your plan. Mm. There's nothing, there's no problem providing they're communicated. Yeah. And so, you know, you also get all these really nice outcomes and why, the, is, why are both government and opposition and around the world governments are really keen. We're now, as you know, teaching money to kids in the schooling mm. system and so on, financial so literacy. And so why are we doing all this stuff? Look, it, it's, it's not just a, it's not just some weirdo nice to have is if you get people in control of your money and reducing stress levels, banks obviously love it because people don't get in strife with their credit mm. card, uh, don't get in strife with their mortgage. No one wants customers in trouble. No. It doesn't, it doesn't mm. suit anyone. It's, mm. just no, it's not good business. Yeah. So this framework of being good with money is so important. And really funnily, you know, that you actually see couples who've got communicated goals, the divorce race drops off. Yeah, wow. It's really mm. nice stuff. Mm. So control your money, lower stress, stay married, all that sort of stuff. It, it, really good stuff. Change your life. Change your life. And Thank it's you not so that much. hard. No. Thank you so much. That's just incredibly powerful. Pleasure. Thank you so much for listening. We've loved having you with us. We will actually produce some papers and documents off the back of this conversation so you can go and do the work to create your own financial plan. Thank you so much. <laughs>